Let us set aside the worries and burdens of the week and focus our attention on the one who sustains us through every trial and triumph, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made. And of course, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is out front leading the way showing you what you need to do, showing you what you need to say as we go through this thing we call life. And I do pray you had a fantastic week. I hope you're encouraged. Uh, if it was a bad week, don't worry. It's only bad if you didn't learn anything. So I, I'm sure you learned something about this week, about something, someone, or some event you went to. So with that being said, let us get started. Our morning scripture comes from Psalm 3418. Psalm 3418 reads as follows. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Are you crushed in spirit out there right now? Are you brokenhearted? It's only March in 2024. Have you already experienced these things? Because a lot of folks have. And we want you to uh, reach out in prayer. Pray with someone. You pray in the comforts of your own home. Uh, but definitely pray nonetheless. And we also have resources at get get dash prayer i'll get it right here soon get dash prayer.com where we write articles about prayer and praying and devotionals and all those things related to prayer uh in fact we should have a few articles going up next week to uh get keep things up to date so to speak <laughs> we write as a spirit it orders us to write so but right now though we're going to pray for you and we ask you to Bow your heads wherever you are. Uh, if you're in a car, pull over and really take in the words. And we really want you to be serious about your prayer. This is not just to make you feel good. It is to reach out to the Lord on the things he already knows that we're going through. But to show that our faith is strong because we know where it comes from. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts heavy from the burdens of this world. We lift up to you all those who have faced difficulties and challenges in the past week. For those who are weary and discouraged, may they find comfort in your presence. Lord, you are close to the brokenhearted, and you save those who are crushed in spirit. Please wrap your loving arms around each person who is struggling and remind them of your unfailing love. Grant them strength, Lord, to pers persevere through the trials of life and fill them with the hope for the days ahead. Help them to find solace in your promises and peace in your presence. Surround them with your grace and mercy and let them feel the warmth of your embrace. So as we take a moment today to study your word and to listen to what you want to tell us, may we be reminded of your faithfulness and goodness. May our hearts and our spirits be lifted, our faith renewed, and our hearts filled with gratitude for your never-ending love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The title of today's message is Rainbows of Promise. God's covenant with his people. Rainbows of promise. God's covenant with his people. When you think of rainbows, what comes to mind? Is it something good or something bad? Is it something you saw on the internet or something you saw on the news? Rainbows are very popular nowadays, but they do have a purpose and a meaning when we see them. I saw one a few days ago and thought about how beautiful it was, but I know the truth to it. Do you? Well, let's get let's talk about this we're in genesis 9 starting at verse 8 and we're going to go to verse 13 genesis 9 verse 8 to 13 which reads as follows then god said to noah and to his sons with him i now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is a sign 
of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your covenant, one that we are under since that time. Thank you for the reminder in the sky. Thank you for making it beautiful, making it noticeable, and sparking great conversation around the world about what it is and why. It gives us a chance to share this hope that we have in you. So we pray, Father, that we are enlightened today. Say what needs to be said, do what needs to be done. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, amen. We are picking up the end of the story in regards to the flood, but I want to do a high level review of how we got here. So in Genesis 6, humanity's escalating evil provokes God's grief, leading to the decision to erase mankind and the earth. We read that in verses 11 through 13 where it says, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence, and because of them, I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So this is where it started. <laughs> Noah, however, stands out for its righteousness and is chosen to survive the impending doom. God instructs Noah to build an ark for its family and pairs of every species to preserve life. It's verse 16 where we first hear of a covenant. The verse reads, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark. You and your sons and your wife and your son's wife with you. So we see there, he will establish a covenant with Noah, but not at that moment. Noah, in uh, Genesis 7, adhering to God's command, boards the ark with his family and the animals. Uh, the flood engulfs the earth, eradicating all life outside the ark. The scriptures detail the flood's magnitude and duration, emphasizing the comprehensive destruction and the fulfillment of God's directive. Then we get to Genesis 8, as the floods recede, God remembers Noah, leading to the earth's drying, Noah sends out birds to find land, signaling the water's retreat. Upon exiting the ark, Noah builds an altar and sacrifices to God, who, moved by Noah's devotion, promises never to curse the earth or destroy all life with a flood again. And this leads us to where we are now in chapter 9, where Noah receives not just marching orders for him and the family, but receives the covenant of God that he spoke of earlier in the scriptures. It's the same covenant we can see when we have a good rain, the rays of the sun break through the clouds and we get this beautiful thing called a rainbow, this great reminder, this visible, beautiful reminder of events that transpired long ago, hovering over us unscathed, still as new as God created it. What is a covenant? I like how Baker's Evangelical Dictionary of Biblical Theology puts this. The term covenant is of Latin origin, convenia, with meaning a coming together. It presupposes two or more parties who come together to make a contract, agreeing on promises, stipulations, privileges, and responsibilities. But what do we grasp from God's covenant with Noah? The same covenant that we are all benefiting from to this day. I want you to first notice the universality of God's covenant. Verse 9 and 10 says, I now establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. The rainbow covers everything. Where the flood covered the earth and destroyed everything, this covenant covers everything and makes it new. It appears above everything and everyone. At any given time or day, depending on what's going on, weather-wise, you can be anywhere in the world 
and see the rainbow should God ordain it. Reminding us of the universality of his covenant. Why? Because his creation is his. And his creation alone. And he can make it appear anywhere he wants it to appear. He doesn't care about your race, ethnicity, because this covenant extends to all humanity. Thus being the reason why, depending on what's going on, depending on where you are in the world, you might get a shot to see the rainbow. Any given day, something could happen. Secondly, consider the permanence of God's covenant. It has lasted the test of times and remains unchanged. God did not bless us with the rainbow, the changed, the visual presentation of it in his latter years. No, God did not say it would change. And here's the kicker. The rainbow's connection to God's word does not change either. And what's the connection? Read verse 11. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. Every time we look up and see that rainbow, we should always remember that regardless of how bad things get, here stands all of us under the covenant. Regardless of what you see people do, we all stand under the covenant. And don't think about this too hard. Don't think that God's going soft. No, no. This is mercy. This is a merciful God looking down and seeing that there are those who are working to have righteous lives. We're all not bad. We're all born in sin. But many of us have found the saving grace of Jesus Christ and are working to share this hope that we have with the world, which has definitely lost its way. There are those who get it because if he wanted to, he could wipe us all out in a matter of moments. But because of his covenant, his mercy, and the grace given to us by the great provision, Jesus Christ, he's not going to. Look at what a virus did to the world, COVID-19. Now y'all, where were you when that went down? Where were you? Do you remember the streets being empty like a ghost town? Photos around the world of life just stopping. People, we are a fragile species. If that didn't tell us anything, if that didn't show us anything, we are very fragile because our life is so fragile. Don't ever take life and the time you have here for granted. Just as the rainbow arcs across the sky, spanning from horizon to horizon, so too does God's love encircle us, never fading or diminishing. It's all current, it's all relevant, it's all without compromise. And then there is the beauty of God's covenant. Let's marvel at this for a moment. God's beauty remains unmatched, does it not? The rainbow's dazzling hues captivate our senses, filling us with awe and wonder. God's covenant is a thing of beauty, bringing light and joy into our lives. We're reminded by the beauty of God's creation every day that we are indeed blessed. When you turn off the TV and disconnect your cell phone and take a walk and look around, you see God's kingdom for what it is and you take in the fullness of just how blessed you are. Satan wants you to stay in the world overshadowed with darkness and despair. He, he wants you lost in, the, in all the arguments, the sexist arguments and the racism and this ism and that ist and all these things. He doesn't want you to stop and look up and be reminded at the beauty of God's creation. He doesn't want you to stop and look up and be reminded of the mercy he has given to you, the grace given 
through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. He doesn't want you to see that rainbow for what it is. He does not, that's why he changed the meaning of it here on earth. He doesn't want you to, to know the truth of what that rainbow means. And so like many things in life, Satan takes God's creations and he cannot recreate them, but he changes their meanings to fool the masses, even believers, even believers. They can try to define it, attach a narrative to it that fits their needs. But one thing is for sure. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Romans 1.20 When you see people using God's creations out of context, they are still without excuse. When you see people abusing their time on earth because they have decided to choose the world over God, they are still without excuse. And this goes for friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, and even some church folk. And that leads us to our final observation here, the rainbow being a reminder of God's covenant. Wherever we see its radiant colors arcing across the sky, it let it serve as a call to remember the promises of God. Promises of redemption, forgiveness, and salvation. In the good and bad times, when we feel lost and alone, may the sight of the rainbow remind us of God's presence. And his love goes so deep, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for you and for me. To ensure we never face wrath like this. But here's the thing, though. You have to come to Jesus Christ. There is no other way. You have to come to Christ. You have to submit, surrender all, and come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the light, and the life. And if you think you're going to skip over Jesus, you're wrong because God has given everything to Jesus Christ. There is no other way you or I get to heaven. Not by the good that we do. Not by just knowing God. You must come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. God's word says it. God spared you from the coming of finite wrath and gave you grace because regardless of what you've done, are doing, are believing, are hurting, maybe you, you've been hurt, maybe you're angry at God, maybe you've renounced God. How about that one? Maybe you're still trying to find reason the grace of God is shown in that sky every day reminding you of his promise and the reasons thereof and the fact that you still have time to repent and come to the Lord Jesus Christ so as you enjoy St. Patrick's Day reflect on St. Patrick the deep dive of a rainbow when you catch one in the sky remember what has been done and what is being done for you and what will be done for you if you just believe. The rainbow isn't about pots of gold. It isn't about little Irish men in green suits running around that you're trying to catch. It's not about four leaf clovers. That's all entertainment value that the world put on it to disguise the truth of what the rainbow is. Maybe you're out there and you've been looking up at that rainbow and you've been wondering, why is it there? What does it serve? What purpose does it serve? God has a reason for everything. And what you have there is a beautiful creation by God that serves as a natural revelation. It serves as a truth, a divine truth to God's purpose for you, for me, it serves as a testament to the authenticity of God's word. So when you see people living in sin, when you see 
people who serve the demonic forces of this earth take natural things created by God and they use them for their own purposes to the point that it's almost uh, sketchy to even have a rainbow on your shirt, on your jacket. You got to stay in prayer. You've got to get into your word and ask yourself, I know what they use it for. I know what they use that rainbow for, but what what is the origins of it? What is, why is it there? That, my friend, is where you receive a natural revelation of who God is. And prayerfully, when you understand this truth, the only truth to the rainbow, that would lead you to the special revelation understanding that he's not going to destroy the world again for what all the sin they lived in because someone's coming that will take care of the world save humanity of their sin by putting it all on himself and dying on a cross for you and for me and rising again three days later with all power in his hand in giving us the opportunity to make the choice. If you believe, then you can be in heaven with him. You can be in eternity with him. But if you don't, oh, I, I wouldn't take this risk. I wouldn't take it. To be separated from those you love who had made the choice to serve Christ. And to think of the horror of not seeing them again I got to have hope. You got to have hope. Here's the ending thought. Mark 16, 16. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Take in the words as you look up into the heavens at the rainbow. And remind yourself God is giving you time. Because one day. For all of us, the time will be up and it will be too late and you will be where you chose to be based off your own actions, based off your own belief. So the time is now. Consider it. Think about it. Dive into it. Try to understand. And God will make a way. There's no doubt about that. Now, if there's anything that we can do to help you along that way, to pray with you, to uh, come alongside you in that understanding. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to contact us at get-prayer.com. Get-prayer.com and fill out the form and we'll definitely get in contact with you and see what we can do to help you begin your journey, restart your journey in prayer with the Lord or just keep you on track. All of us together. One unit, one fight, one belief, one faith. Isn't it great? Isn't it wonderful that we can look up in the sky and see the marvels of God all around us? And because of that, like I said earlier, there is no excuse. You really have no excuse. So if you're ready, go ahead and give us a, an email and, and let us know what's going on. We will pray for you. We'll pray with you. And then we'll show you what prayer is all about. Maybe you have felt like your prayer is not in Maybe it's ineffective. Maybe you feel like that uh, you haven't. Maybe you're doing something wrong. You might think that. Well, no, let's talk. Let's see what we can do to help you. And then you take it from there. This takes faith. So until next time, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we'll talk to you next week. You take care.